Hi guys, Buildzoid here, and this is just going to be a quick little video on how you shouldn't do temperature sensors. So here we have the ASRock Master SLI X470 board. I I'm sorry, ASRock, I'm going to keep ripping on you. The promise of free samples doesn't really make me care much. So here we have the, the board running Prime95. Um, I have the board set to 1.42 volts in the BIOS, but the board doesn't have any LLC, which is fine. I consider that a safety feature on a board of this, uh, of this class. Um, and I was basically preparing to do my voltage control uh, video, demonstrating how the LLC works and all of that. Either way, um, here we have the VRM temperature sensor, and right now the temperature is dropping because this fan is sitting on top of it. But I want to show you what happens when I move that fan away, right? So obviously this is, this is not a uh, test of the VRM cooling, this is just how does that temperature sensor behave. And you may notice that I have a minimum temperature of 0 degrees Celsius right there and 125 right here. So the temperature's already started rising and it's gonna keep rising. Um, and eventually it's gonna hit 125. And that's where my problem with this motherboard kicks in. So we're just gonna wait for that to happen because uh, we all know I don't like editing. It shouldn't take too long. 114. Also, it is really, really hot today, so. Like, th this is not a, like, this is not a test of, like, how good the VRM is. This is just, like, does the VRM have any safety features? And we're, we're gonna see in the next couple seconds how many, uh, well, at least how, how well uh, considered the temperature sensor is. Because here's the thing, there's a lot of motherboards, like, say, the S Asus X470 Prime Pro, that one doesn't have working soft like in hardware info, none of the temperature sensors picked up from that motherboard actually measure VRM temperature. I don't know what most of them measure because like I I've tried to figure out what the hell those were measuring because they were all measuring really, really low relative to like what I was getting on the K-type thermocouples. And it's just like, I don't know, those, those sensors seem to be just pulling numbers out of nowhere. Um, so that motherboard doesn't have working temperature sensors in software, but... Um, when I ran the motherboard, basically, in, when I decided to try run the motherboard into the ground, um, it did shut down. But as you can see here, um, this one, you go over 125 degrees Celsius on that temperature sensor, and all that happens is that the temperature sensor bugs out to zero. D d like, really? No, no throttling. No, no nothing. No, no actual safety has been triggered. We're at 125 degrees on that VRM. And this is what we get. The, the temperature sensor rolls over. So to a normal user, this looks like the temperature is just not, like this is not a working temperature sensor and they should just either, like just ignore it. Because that's normally the recommendation. If your temperature sensor is reading like what, 0 or 125 only, then it's probably broken. Okay, but this, this is a working temperature sensor. Like, as long as it's measuring a temperature lower than 125, it works. But instead of, like, once we exceed 125, instead of doing the ASUS thing, which ASUS would just shut the motherboard down, because that's a safe, like, that's a safety system. Um, gigabyte, what they do is, depending on how you have your BIOS configured, a gigabyte board will either shut down, or it'll start throttling your CPU clocks and voltages and just everything. Um, it'll start throttling, and as soon as it hits, like, 125, 126, it'll start throttling. You exceed 125, 126, it sh or if you kill your C-states, it shuts the boards down. Here, we have a motherboard which, um, you know, just kind of decides to run itself into the ground. I mean, I, I, I don't feel particularly safe letting this just keep running. Um, mind you, we're not even at that high a voltage. We're at 1.3... Oh, and the voltage is starting to drop. That's concerning. That's actually concerning. <laughs> okay, well, that's no good. Okay, but we're gonna restart this, and I'm gonna... Because right now I'm overclocking in a sort of janky way that, I don't know, may maybe I've overridden the board safety feature, but either way, like, the BIOS shouldn't allow you to override the safety features like this, because it doesn't say anywhere that th what I've done is actually risky for the motherboard. So we're going to stop Prime 95. That VRM is going to stay at that temperature for ages, because 
those aluminum blocks that Azrock has on there, they're not very good heat sinks. They're very good thermal shock absorbers. So they're good at absorbing a lot of heat and then staying really hot. Um, so hopefully by the time I restart, we're, we're still going to be at that high temperature and we're not going to have to wait for it to come back up. But, like, already what we've seen is just, like, this This shouldn't be, like, what, I, what, what I've just demonstrated shouldn't be possible. So you can see I have 1.21 there, but um, the thing is, there's a voltage setting down here, which is what I'm messing, what I was messing around with, just to see if I maybe couldn't get rid of the giant amount of V-droop this has. But quite frankly, I'd say it's a good thing that this motherboard doesn't let you easily remove all of the V-droop because it would, like, those VRM temperatures would be that much worse. So we're just going to go and load UEFI defaults, OC tweaker, ASRock settings, manual, 1.425. Um, which is way too high for uh, 2700X for daily usage, but we're going to run that. Oh, yeah, we need to load XMP. This is stupid. Like, the, the whole forcing you to run XMP for the board to... Uh, oh, come on. Azrox BIOS tripping me up as usual. Sock voltage. Let's just go 1.17. And uh, let's roll with this. Yeah, that looks good to me. How's that VRM heatsink? Ow! <laughs> Hot. <laughs> okay. So I don't think it actually changed temperature that much. That's good. Stupid Windows install. This Windows install has been quite badly abused by me, so... That's why, it, yeah, like, right now it's out of resolution, wrong resolution and everything, so that's, that's just great. Keep changes. When will my main screen come on? There we go, now I can see what's going on. Um, so we're going to open up hardware info, run, and let's get Prime95 open. Uh-huh, so what's the VRM at? VRM's now at 82, okay, so it has managed to actually cool down a bit. Small FFTs, and let's see. Okay, so 87, 90. Yeah, it, it comes back quick, so that's nice. <laughs> it didn't let it cool down, so it's going to be back up to temperature soon. But basically, already, I'm not, not impressed. This motherboard, as soon as it hits 125, should have started throttling the CPU, or should have shut down. One of the two. Okay, the VRM especially considering the MOSFETs that this uses, should not be allowed to exceed 125 degrees Celsius, okay? It's just like, no. Um, like, there are higher, like, there are high-end MOSFETs where I'd be like, okay, you know what? It'd be better if they ran cooler, but, you know, it's not like they're going to die immediately, but... This is, because the, the other thing is, this is external MOSFET temperature, because ASRock's using... Um, Nyko semiconductor discrete FETs. So the temperature sensor is actually just sort of sitting somewhere near the VRM, uh, ideally sort of right, right around the VRM, uh, middle of the VRM. That's roughly where that sensor should be positioned. Um, let's see if we get thermal throttling now. I kind of doubt it. <laughs> it's going to roll over again. And I'm going to be really disappointed. One, two, two. Mind you, now we have even more V droop than last time, which is which is great. So one twenty three. And will it go to zero or will it drop my CPU ratio? One twenty five and moment of truth. It rolls over. You gotta be kidding me. I'm just turning on my uh, multimeter again. So, yeah, you know, the, like, okay, so we have all the equipment necessary to, to have a safe VRM here. It's just not actually getting used at all, you know? It's like, yeah, there, there's a temperature sensor in the VRM. It's just unfortunate that nobody thought to implement actual thermal protection. 
you know, that, that would have been, like, a good idea, <laughs> I'd say. We're at 1.32 volts. Like, we're, we're not even running that much voltage into this thing, and it's getting... S well, I mean, I'm not surprised. The, the MOSFETs on this thing are something terrible, but... I'm kind of, like... I wonder if I could just let the board run itself into the ground. And just, just like, let it, you know... Because eventually it should burn out if we just let it run for long enough. Um... On the other hand, I still want to test the board, <laughs> and I'd rather keep my 2700X, because the problem with a VRM dying is, depending on how it dies and which part of it dies when, uh, you may or may not have a working CPU afterwards, because if your high side MOSFET fails short circuit, uh, that's killing your CPU. And if your power supply is crap, that's going to kill the power supply too. So, yeah. Oh, and of course the motherboard's going to be dead as well. So, let's, let's just stop the test. Um... I will show you one thing that is good about this motherboard, because it's not all bad. So, this motherboard um, has, right, like, idle voltage readings are actually completely wrong. If we look at my multimeter, this is one of those motherboards. This does the same thing like gigabyte boards do. If you don't mess with the C states, as soon as you're sitting at idle, it drops your voltage, which is really, really neat. It doesn't show up in software, but it does have sort of, like... This is not how AMD's overclock, like, according to the AMD spec for how uh, overclocking on Ryzen CPUs is supposed to work, this isn't supposed to be a thing. But both Gigabyte, ASRock, and I think even Asus have it working like this, where as long as you don't disable your C states, your idle voltage will be really, really low, which is pretty neat. And as soon as you start doing something like moving the mouse, your voltage comes right back up, as you can clearly see. And then when I let go everything, it goes back to idle. So that's really neat. So that does work. But, uh, there's no temperature protection, which, uh, has me very disappointed, to say the least. Um, so, yeah. Also, if anybody's wondering how you can check if your motherboard has a VRM th thermal sensor, uh, intentionally restrict the airflow to the VRM area, let the, you know, let it build up some heat, and then put a fan right onto a VRM heatsink, and if you see the if you see one of the temperatures rapidly drop, you know, you have a temperature sensor. That's how I found, figured out where, like, that the auxiliary T, uh, T in one here is the VRM temperature. Um, it's just very unfortunate that there's no, like, th th this temperature sensor isn't being used. I guess if you have this motherboard, what you should do is configure hardware info, which I think it lets you do that. Um, alert, yeah, you can set an alert. And enable alert if value is greater than or equal to 125 um, and less or less than zero, well, less than one. Um, and there, you'll, you'll have an alert now if your motherboard's about to go thermonuclear. Well, not really, it's, it may or may not die, but you, like, freaking, you have the damn temperature sensor, use it. <laughs> Anyway, so that's what I wanted to to point out today because I just noticed this and I find this like th this is a problem with a lot of motherboards. It's like, oh yeah, we got temperature sensors. It's just we don't actually use them to do a damn thing. Um, so yeah, you're going to have to set like a hardware info alert to tell you when your motherboard is really getting stupid hot. Um, and the thing is, it's like, the MOSFET's getting to 125, not that concerning. Everything near the, everything else near the VRM getting to 125 is concerning. Okay, now admittedly, ASRock goes and slaps 12,000 hours rated capacitors on this thing. Um, but, it's just like, honestly, I would have preferred if they just made a less crap VRM and cheaper capacitors. <laughs> Like, if the VRM didn't get that hot in the first place, you wouldn't have to worry about having super high endurance capacitors. But, uh... Yeah. Or, or if they had freaking working temperature protection, right? Like, if the VRM... Like, ideally, it, as soon as the VRM exceeds 125, the board should either shut down or throttle. Not drop the sensor to zero degrees. Like, I don't know. 
So that's really disappointing because uh, both Gigabyte and Asus have working temperature protection and I didn't actually manage to get the... That's actually funny. I didn't manage to get the MSI board to overheat. Like even on like a test bench scenario like this, where I was running 1.4 volts into the CPU, it just ended up getting stuck at around 109. And like that was after an hour of Prime 95 and it was just sitting at 109 degrees Celsius. And I was like, well, screw this. This isn't ever going to hit 125 at this rate. And I'm not, and it's like, I'm not going to intentionally put a pillow over the VRM just to get it to overheat. So yeah, but that's disappointing. That's like seriously disappointing because you have the damn temperature sensor and then you proceed to not actually use it to do anything to protect the user, right? Because it, it rolls over and it's like to make it worse, the freaking sensor rolls over, which is just like, so when the user then goes to check their temperatures, right, they're going to be like, oh, the sensor just doesn't work because there's going to be a minimum temperature of zero and a maximum temperature of 125. And it's just like, okay, so this is just buggy because there's no way... In, there's no way that sensor could have been reading zero accurately, right? But no, no, when that sensor is reading zero, it just means your temperature is in excess of 125, which is where it stops measuring, which is just great, awesome. Um, like, put it freaking temperature shut down. Like, really? You know, and actually, I, this is something I'm, I'm wondering about. If you have this motherboard, and if you run hardware info just running all the time, has your motherboard actually exceed done this with that temperature sensor? Because if it has, your system, as it is currently configured, is already going way over temperature on the VRM. Like, yeah, that's, that's like, that really disappointing. It's like, it's one thing, like Asus has, like with, with Asus, there's no actual accurate temperature readout in hardware info whatsoever. Because, like, I was, when I was doing my VRM thermal tests on that board, I was measuring, like, 118 on the back. And in the software, in hardware info, I was getting, like, 51 degrees Celsius, right? And then I just let it run for longer, and eventually the motherboard actually just shut down outright, which was like, okay, so it does have a safety feature. It just doesn't have working temperature monitoring, which is like, I can live with that, you know? Because ultimately, you don't really need to know about the temperature as long as the temperature isn't allowed to exceed safe operating temperature. But this, this is just, this doesn't bloody work, does it? Anyway, um, that's, that's it for, well, I'd argue that having the VRM shut down at 125, well, it, I, you know, that, that's a fair shutdown temperature. You know, that, that's like an acceptable shutdown temperature for most motherboards, but this motherboard doesn't even do that. So it's just, yeah, um, I'm, I'm very disappointed because it's like, oh, it has temperature sensors and then, oh, it doesn't actually use them to do anything. So yeah, that's it for the video. Thank you for watching. Like, share, subscribe, leave a comment, question, suggestions down in the comment section below. If you'd like to support what I do here with Actually Hardcore Overclocking, I have a Patreon, a PayPal, and t-shirts you can buy. You can find a link to all of that down in the description below. And, uh, you know, helping out AHOC allows me to do things like abuse uh, cheap motherboards with uh, completely unrealistic thermal tests just to figure out if the temperature sensors work or not. Which, this doesn't count as working. Because it's not like it rolls over, like what the hell. Uh, okay, so that's it, and goodbye.